Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell, right here at the Arnell School of Fine Art. And like I mentioned, we're going to continue with these instructional series for the online school. For those of you that are members, uh, you're going to love what we're going to cover on this particular session. I hope you've enjoyed some of the other ones so far. Just gives me a chance to drill down a little bit more on the details and the technical aspect of certain things that sometimes we can't do in the PBS series because we're always under such a time restraint there as well as you know it has to be a little more entertaining here I don't have to entertain you as much I just drill down to the nitty-gritty and get to it and that's what we're going to do today we're going to talk about shadows so we're going to call this painting Aspen Shadows now the word Aspen refers to the tree Aspen it's not necessarily a study on Aspens although you'll learn a lot because we're going to paint some aspen trees but it's how shadows fall on the ground and aspen trees are beautiful trees they are so long and tall it gives you plenty to work with they cast long shadows and a lot of you struggle with shadows I've noticed over the years and especially recently for some reason I've had a lot of students come to the studio and they put their shadows in their paintings and they're all wrong they're either the wrong direction they don't understand the tonal values and understand how to structure them. So I thought it might be a good idea to drill down on some shadows. So we're going to do a little bit of technical study. I'm going to show you some photographs to back up all this information. And then we're going to do a painting. Uh, it's Again, I want to call these study paintings because they're not always going to be completely finished. And I want to make sure everyone understands that. It's not about you thinking, oh, wow, there's another great painting I can copy and, you know, go do something with it. It's all about learning. That's why we call it school. So keep that in mind, all right? So let's talk about what we're going to do. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you the main reference material that I'm going to use. If you'll notice these aspen trees, isn't this beautiful? Now, you see, here's why. And by the way, this particular lesson on shadows is based on backlight like this. Now, backlighting is where your light source is directly behind an object, whether it be trees or buildings or whatever, and your shadows are cast forward. You see how the strips of light and shadow? So in this case, your light source is right here, and so your shadows will come forward based on where they're landing on your ground. Let me give you a little rule right quick. Shadows always follow the contour of the ground or your land mass. I'm going to show that to you and we're going to do a little work on that. So you can see this is kind of a flat ground. We're going to do a painting similar to this today. Not quite this complicated, but we're going to have a nice backlight, some dark pine trees so that we can have some contrast for our aspens to show up. And then we'll put some shadows coming forward to add a little bit of contour. And then I think I've got another one here I was going to show you. Now on this one it's in snow. Get them to close in on this one. So again, see here's your light source right here. It's way back behind. It's a little higher, but it's coming. So you see your shadows are going slightly this direction, but if you'll notice every little ripple in the snow, they follow the contour of the snow. Whatever object is being cast on something, it's going to follow that shape. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's a brick wall, a side of a building, it'll follow the side of that building. So that's what I want you to see. But aren't those beautiful aspen trees? I'll tell you, there's something about aspen trees that are just, of course, when I lived up in, um, in New Mexico and Angel Fire, that was my favorite thing to go out early and study the aspens. And All right, let's talk about this real quick. I want to show you another so a few samples here, and I like to do this because I'm not one of these teachers that likes to just give you information and say, just trust me, even though I wouldn't ever mislead you, but I like to give you, uh, you know, backup uh, information is in terms of literature, I mean, not literature, but photographs to back up this. So here you go. Here's your aspens. Funny, it's more of a sun open day, but the sun has to be reasonably low in order for it to cast a shadow. So here they come forward again, another backlit situation because of the, the shadows are coming forward towards you. That's pretty cool, I think. Here's another one. I love this one. Isn't this cool? So there's your backlight directly behind this tree and notice all of the limbs are being cast forward and you can see them as they follow the contour of the little mounds of snow see how they ripple that's the shape of the little land mass underneath whether it be snow or sand or whatever it might be now here's another one kind of interesting so if you think about the light source coming in this way from the left it's hitting a strong slope here notice how they're all angled then when it hits this part of the grass, it goes this direction. It follows the contour 
of your land masses, no matter what it is, <clears throat> how straight it is. Now here's one. Now I can only see one tree here, but I want you to see this. Now this is a very low sun, but notice the strong cast shadow here, and that's going to be because it's lower. The longer the shadow, that means the lower the sun. So, or vice versa, the lower the sun, the longer the shadow will be. But isn't that cool? So you can see a strong shadow there. It just follows. That's kind of flat ground. And this is all just mounds of snow, so it's casting on itself so you don't see the individual trees because it's all embedded in that snow there. Uh, by the way, here's another backlit thing. There's no shadow here, but see, that's what's called backlight, where you have your light source behind an object, then you can put silver linings on. Now, this one's just a matter of showing you the contour of shadows. Here you can see the strong cast shadows on these aspen trees up on a little angled snow. See how they all follow? So that means your sun's way over here on the left and is casting a shadow towards the right. That makes sense to you guys? So, and notice they're kind of flat. This is any lips. They're not the same width as the tree. A lot of people make that mistake because you're standing sort of at an angle. You're going to create an elliptical uh, effect. So they're going to be kind of flatter. Nice trees, though, aren't that? See that beautiful aspen? So we're going to do a little bit of that, too. You're going to learn more than just shadows in this study. You're going to learn several things. Now, here's one. A little harder to see. I took this picture up at Angel Fire. But you can see here the cast shadows are coming down like this. I actually did this painting once. They're just casting down, following the angle of this little hillside. So that means my sun's back over here. It's not in view of the painting, the photograph here, it's over here, so that's why it's cast this direction, okay? So, I just want to give you a few examples so you can understand how this works. Now, here's some where you see the shadows are just flat across the road. They're not very visible, but you can see, now that's where there's a mass, there's the more skinny ones, so you have to kind of depend, if it's got a big canopy, you're going to have fatter shadows, like on this next one here. You'll see here, See how the shadows are bigger and wider? That's because you have larger trees. Now I want you to notice something. The sun's from the right, comes over here. There's trees over here. Cast this away, but look what happens, folks. Hits the bar ditch, goes down. Then what does it do? It follows the angle of the hillside. See, it's following the mass, the, the land mass. If the road's got a little angle to it, it'll follow that. Whatever it Whatever it hits, see here, it hits the road, but when it gets over here, it's got this little, going up this gentle slope right there. So this is all shadow, just a big mass of canopy of leaves that's casting that. So I want to be really clear before we get started how shadows work. Now this one, again, notice something. The sun now is back over here going this direction. So the shadows go in at the angle. And look at this, how steep those shadows are. See, it goes down in the little bar ditch and it goes right up the side of that hill. See, that's what those are, those little cast shadows. Those are, that's a pretty straight drop off there. But these are angled this direction because the sun's over here. This one's not a backlit sun. It just, but it just shows you the different kinds of cast. See, there's some more cast shadows, bigger masses from all the brush, and then you get skinnier limbs from the trunk showing. So that's kind of, what I want you to see there, oh, there's another aspen tree. Here's a couple on some of the trees that we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you how to do the bark, the old eyes, and the, you know, the old rough peeled bark. Now here's one that's similar to what we're going to do also in terms of how the shadows are going to be cast because we're going to have a grassy meadow, two or three different contours. So here's the cast. So that means your glow is back over here off the, this particular photograph. So it's casting here, following. This is a flat ground. So, but it, everywhere there's a little ripple of grass, it's going to follow it. All right. That, does that help you guys enough to see what's going on there? And there's a few more little aspen trees there. You can still see the shadows. And that's just what we're going to work on. It's going to be fun. So let me get these over here kind of out of our way. And I think you'll enjoy getting this started. Now, very quickly, though, got to do my little deal here. So here's how this works. Just give you a little technical advice. Say you have a dirt road. You got a little hillside right here. Maybe you got a little drop off over here. 
Got another hill 